So we're on the school run and this week's an important week as well. Children's Mental Health Week is kicked off from yesterday and the annual week is dedicated to raising awareness around children and young people's mental health and I wanted to talk about it. Talking to children about mental health examines the key mental health problems that impact young people, uh, whether that is to do with depression or loneliness or anxiety And it really looks at the way lifestyle, culture and actually just the world in general uh, that children and young people are living in can play a significant part on their mental health and the impact of it as well. Well, to tell me a little bit more about how we can empower parents and carers to understand the world of our children... I'm joined on the line by author and mental health activist Lily Joe. Lily Joe, it's lovely to have you uh, here on Radio London. You'd think as adults, Lily Joe, that actually we've all been teenagers, we've all been children. So seeing as how we've been there, we would know what it feels like, but it's not the case, is it? No, and I think that's because we've had a digital revolution since we were younger. Yeah. I know that when I was young, it was a privilege to have a landline phone in my oh, bedroom gosh. at the age of 15. Yes, you know, I and I could that. talk on the phone for 59 minutes and then we'd have to hang up and start a conversation And then again. call again. <laughs> exactly. I remember that. So it's very different now. And I think that level of connection was important as a teenager for me anyway. I know yeah. that. You know, times when you didn't want to speak to your parents about things, or you could talk to your friends that seemed to have the advice when they were 15. Yeah. (laughs) But um, now things are very different. You know, we have the phone in the palm of our hand, in our back pocket, 24-7 news cycles, and our children and young people have been given these smart devices to walk around with without any warnings, you know, without any... Uh, tr- trigger warnings or, or any like labels of instruction you know we as parents are supposed to just figure that stuff out and so that's why I've written my book talking to children about mental health to try and empower this next generation of parents to be able to navigate this digital landscape that we're currently facing. But what are we saying Lily Joe? is it right when you're having dinner phones off everyone let's have a chat I mean is that how this <laughs> works? I don't I mean I've got a five year old so I've got a couple of years thankfully to have yeah. to deal with it but I know it's kind Yeah, well, I think it is important that we do create as soon as possible and say that now for you and your five year old, these phone free zones. So places in your home where you are disconnected from technology so that you can have those real life connections. So for us in our family home, I've got two children, one's 15 and one is 10. We don't have phones at the dinner table. And that okay. is our phone free zone. So sure. if we mess up on that boundary, yeah. somebody will say, oh, dad, you're not supposed to have your phone at the table. And it's like, oh, yep, sorry. So we're not perfect with it. But because it's something that we've discussed as a family, it's something that we know as part of our family rules. Yeah. That's something that we can all then stick to and try our hardest to stick with. Now, look, you're, you, are, uh, uh, you are the director of the award-winning mental health platform, The Lily Joe Project. And it's all around raising awareness but what I quite like when I was looking into this Lily Jo is you're not necessarily saying that one parenting style is the only way you know it's more about adapting kind of what you do and your approach essentially Mm -hmm. absolutely like it's got to be right for you and your family but I think we just have to be aware that we've never learned as parents how to perhaps navigate and um, manage our own use of technology because yeah. we've not been around for that long exactly so we're still learning we, aren't we we're still learning what <laughs> our boundaries are and what we need and you know yeah. i know and from research it shows that we about between 30 and 30 minutes and 60 minutes will provide you with that kind of feeling of connection and joy when you're scrolling through social media you know when you're getting the love hearts and the flowers and the likes and all those things it lasts for about 30 to 60 minutes but beyond that we're just watching and we're not participating so it's important that we recognize okay is this now is this scrolling now giving me joy or am i just bored if i'm just bored then perhaps there's something else i could do that'd be more meaningful and add more purpose to my life I mean, I've found that in recent years. I'm, I'm, I'm coming off social media more and more and I'm feeling a lot better. But then mm-hmm. how do you tell a 14-year-old that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think with my 14-year-old, well, he's now 15, what I did was I sat with him and I watched him scroll and he allowed that because I've always said from the very beginning that this phone belongs to me 
I pay for it, so it's mine. <laughs> it could seem very hard for yeah, people yeah. listening. Yeah, give them the reality. But... <laughs> <laughs> it's coming out of my said, account. I'm paying for it. Phone. I have the rules. <laughs> exactly. So I said, I want to sit with you and we'll scroll together and we'll see what, what things come up for you. Gotcha. And actually, we know that there's different algorithms, obviously. So my son's phone knows that he's 15, that right. he lives in Stockport, sure. that he likes basketball and funny videos and so it will send him those things to his feed but it will also target him with adverts like from a famous body spray company and one of those adverts came up and I said what do you think this advert is trying to teach you or tell you about yourself mm. and he said if I spray this uh, this this spray on my body I'm going to be more attractive to the opposite wow. sex and wow. I said, exactly that. That is what the advert wants you to say. It wants, wants you to believe that you're not good enough without that product. So once you give the child the tools to understand what the advertisers are trying to tell them, mm. they then have their own autonomy to decide, well, do I want to purchase that product or am oh, I okay I? without? Do you know, I, that's the thing, isn't it? We want to wrap our kids up in cotton wool, but the truth mm-hmm. of the matter is we cannot be with our children 24-7. It's not possible. And no. so what you're talking about, and obviously the book delves more into, is mm-hmm. autonomy of thought, isn't it? It is absolutely that. And, you know, I don't want to demonise technology because it's sure. here to stay. Oh, it's we need it. Like <laughs> we, and we do need it. And, you know, technology has is, is found uh, long-lost family members. It's raised yeah. billions for charity. It's found organ donors. You know, technology is good, but it's just about knowing what the boundaries are around it. Just like sugar, we can't completely eliminate it from our diet, but mm. we know how much is too much and we can try and control that as best possible. So it's an interesting point, Lily Jo. Lovely having you uh, on Radio London. And I know the book is out and available now as well. Thanks for joining me today. You're welcome. Take care, Lily Jo. And you can get further details as well for her book, Talking to Children About Mental Health. Uh, just go to the website, thelilyjoproject.com.